This is a painting from more than 200 years ago, the Raft of the Medusa by the French Romanticist painter Théodore Géricault. Depicting an actual and inglorious event of the French shipping history. The Medusa was a ship that sank on its way to Africa. The captain ordered to build a raft out of the remains, but things went from bad to worse to even cannibalism until a few survivors could be saved eventually. Which is obviously the moment Jericho wanted to show us here, almost like a journalist photographer would do today. But of course Jericho added a bit of dark pathos to the dismal tragedy. Like Mark Twain once wrote, humor is tragedy plus time. So here we can see Oderzo's parody in Asterix as a legionnaire. The poor pirates after their last encounter with Asterix and Obelix. Since the pirates were introduced into the world of Asterix, they were maybe the favorite side characters in these stories, despite they got usually only a few panels in each album. Funny thing is that the red bearded pirate and his henchman, the old and the black one, were not only a parody of that old Jericho painting, but of some other comic series who was at least as famous as Asterix way back then. I'm of course talking about Barbe Rouge, or Der Rote Corsair in the German translations, or Barbar Roja, or however you pr uh, pronounce it, in the Spanish ones. Strangely enough, I haven't found an English version, even though there was an animation series in the 90s with an English translation called Captain Redbeard. Barbe Rouge, or the Red Corsair, or however you want to call him, was a ruthless and violent pirate. With the help of Three Leg, the old guy, and Baba, the black one who he had rescued from slavery, together they haunted the southern seas. Once he killed the parents of a little boy during one of his captures, and afterwards he adopted the little boy called Rick. Despite his unusual upbringing, Rick somehow managed to grow up to a very decent human being. Even more so, further into the run of these albums, he will convince his stepdad to refrain from pirating. So even though the relationships between the main characters are pretty interesting and keep you intrigued, the main appeal comes from the adventures they had to endure. They roamed the seas as an independent entity between the French, Spani Spanish and English vessels, playing their navies, tricksing and turning with incredible bold maneuvers. There's almost everything in these comics that you can expect from these old-time classic adventure pirate tales. And I'm almost certain that some story arc was used as a template for some old pirate movie way back then. Victor Hubignon, who drew and inked almost each and every panel, was already at the peak of his game with the very first album of Barb Rouge that came out in 1959. He shared the love for the historic subject matter with the writer Jean-Michel Charlier. So whenever you see these old ships in full gear and action, you can be damn sure that each and every detail was correct and at its place. In his later years, Huenot changed perspectives like almost no other in European comics, always making certain that you are really in the scenery. Not in just this regard, he owes a lot to Milton Caniff, which you can easily see in Victor Hubignon's other big series that was started 1947. Buck Danny tells the adventures of an American pilot and his friends. With the exception of the very first pages, this one was also written by Jean-Michel Charlier. As you can see here, Victor Hubignon didn't start as some kind of comic genius. Not by far. He hardly made it from panel to panel. Some look like they've been almost swiped from Kenneth. 
and not very well that has to be said but the clunky start makes his progress later on even more amazing later on he handled Bagdani as perfect as he did the red corsair and this simultaneously since he was responsible for the art of both of these series for many many years like with the pirate comic Bagdani was the love child of both of his creators Jean-Michel Charlier and Victor Rubignon were both pilots themselves. When comics had not paid enough, they even worked as pilots for airmail charters. So it's no wonder that the strong side of Bagdani is again the incredible love for the details and especially the planes. Sometimes Victor Rubignon draws additional schematics to show us the layout, the build of the planes. Something I drooled over as a kid. In a way, it's an illustrated history of military flying since the end of World War II. Jean-Michel Chalier is known today first and foremost because he had written Blueberry, but way back then he was some kind of Swiss army knife in terms of comic book scripting. Combining a sense for the necessity of details and atmosphere with pretty straight plots sometimes a bit very straight and foreseeable ones i have to say especially if you read other comics from him at the same time like the red corsair for an example it can't be denied that charlie's plots followed certain paths regardless if the story takes place in the caribbean sea or an aircraft carrier there's a mission there are the square-jawed heroes, maybe some villains, especially some traitor who delivers the necessary suspense. You will even find a lot of these tropes in Blueberry, Charlie's best work, but I guess it has to be due to the influence of Möbius that Blueberry became a much more well-rounded comic. But in Bagdani, tropes really get repetitious, especially when you read these 11 collected editions of Bagdani back to back, it gets a bit tiring. And I don't even want to address all the nationalistic bull Charlier feeds us. Sometimes the comic reads like a very naive advertisement to join the American Navy. Quite fitting that they had not addressed the Vietnam War, or only very indirect. You should definitely read Milton Caniff's Terry and the Pirates before, which is on the bottom line, just and still the better comic. More fun, more imaginative, the adventures and characters are less stereotypical and especially the female characters are much more interesting. But when you are still interested in his European sibling, you should give Bagdani a chance given you are, like me, a big fan of old-school comics with a realistic setting. And afterwards you could check out the other big European comic series about pilots like Dan Cooper or Tanguy et la Verdure. Or you could continue reading Barb Rouge and Bagdani. Both series were continued by other artists when Victor Rubignon laid down his pencils. But this is maybe the topic for future panology. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.